Hey guys, it's Matthew, and today we're going to talk about Mad Max Fury Road and the Duke's Warrior. This is the Art of Warlick. Okay guys, so went and saw Mad Max Fury Road the weekend it came out. Actually the Friday. It came out on early Friday morning. And uh, it was really awesome. And it inspired me to do a little uh, fan art piece of the breakout star, the Doof Warrior. Um, don't mind that, that's just my, my scratch pad. Uh, so I thought it'd be cool to take you guys through kind of um, just the process for the piece. I did it over the course of about two and a half days, off and on, and I had probably about 20 hours of work total. So we'll start with thumbnails. So I had a couple ideas for thumbnails. Front view, hanging out, side view, which ended up being my favorite. I kind of like this one too with the legs a little further apart. So I went with kind of a hybrid of these two, which uh, ended up being this. It's the rough sketch pencil you see. Really didn't use any reference for this one. That's why he's got the harnesses on his legs, which he doesn't have in the movie or in the finished piece. Just kind of getting, getting the ideas down. So that's rough pencils, and since this is a personal piece and not a commission, I just kept printing new blue lines um, for each stage. So that eventually turned into some slightly tighter pencils. Um, you see he's still got the harnesses on his legs here. Still a square format, which will change later. So I kind of like that, but I still wasn't happy with it. So. Uh, at this point, I went back and I tried to find as much reference as I could, which there's not a lot. Um, there's more now, but the weekend it came out, there was like three photos of this dude. Um, he's actually a pretty cool guy on Instagram. I ended up tagging him in this, and he's a good sport. So, here you go. You can see we went and changed now to the kind of a widescreen view. It's 11 by 17. Um, turn landscape. Uh, one thing I really had to do here was extend the fire to kind of fill the space, um, give it kind of that off balance feel. Um, still trying to work out the details on his on his mask and this guy, his leg down here. Um, one of the photos I found, he's got a weird black like prosthetic. I think he's wearing like a like a boot for when you break your foot on that leg with the cutout and then the sneakers on the bottom. Um, so, scan that in, printed out blue lines, and then did the inks, which this is more of the final piece you're looking at. A um, little messy. You can see where I went back and whited out stuff, lots of splatters. Uh, we'll get this real close, see if you can see it. So, this is the most nerve wracking part for me is the inks because everything's very permanent, and if you mess up, it's white out or start over. Um, so they didn't get the boot quite right. I think the real boot has a few straps on the edge there. But overall, I was pretty happy with it. So I scanned that in, um, and I did some flats, which I'll do an insert here when I edit this down of, of kind of the flat colors that I had in mind. All right, guys, as promised, uh, here's your first insert. This is uh, just the raw scan of the inks. You can see I kind of left a lot of the red line in here. I like the, uh, the grit it gave to the piece. It made it a little dirtier. I thought that was appropriate. Um, speaking of flats, so if we turn on the flat layer, we're looking at about this. Pretty simple. Um, and they are just flat colors underneath the black and white line art, as you can see couple of splatters going on just because we got a lot of these layers turned on that I should probably have turned off. There we go. Looked a bit more like that while I was working on it. Of course with the inks underneath. And then I thought, you know, just the subject matter and everything that's going on, I thought it'd be cool to add a whole bunch of texture to it. So I decided to go back and do an ink wash. Um, couldn't do the ink wash over this. Didn't want to because of the, the white acrylic. Um, makes a weird kind of gray when you start doing ink wash and then you want to scan this. It's hard to clean it up. 
um, so in order to keep the inks separate from the ink wash. So here's the ink wash layer. All these ended up being composited. So let's get up a little closer. So here's the ink wash. You can kind of see. Let's see if I can turn this light. There we go. There's the ink wash over some red lines or blue lines. I don't know what you call them. I thought red was appropriate. So then that, and then I'll do another insert here. I scan that in. Um, composited that on top of the flats. So here's insert number two. Um, just showed you the ink wash layer. Computer's beeping at me here. Um, so when we scan in the ink wash layer, put it on top, you get something about like this. Which I really dug. Thought it looked good. Just makes it look real. I just like, I like digital pieces that don't look digital. And so, with the flat colors underneath, We're up to about here. And so with all that in place, you know, I thought I was getting really close to, to having a nice, nice almost finished piece. Um, decided to go back uh, in these layers here and do some color renders. Uh, and I actually did the color renders with the ink washes off. So we get something about like that on top of the uh, the raw line art, and then I have a uh, another piece of the scan. I uh, duplicated the layer, um, the threshold on it, took it down to just black and white bitmap, so I get some crisp, crisp blacks on top of this color. So that's the color renders, and then the ink wash on top. Dirty it up a bit. Turn on these background layers. So, render the background, bring in the dust clouds, the dust storms, the Morton Joe's Armada rolling across the wasteland. And so, pretty happy with that. Um, went back to add what I call uh, my effects layers, which are, you know, glows here on the fire, um, some color holds, um, just little details that I think really kind of make the piece when you're done, uh, my signature, because I often forget to add it, especially when I'm doing pieces quickly. Um, and then we have just a few more layers uh, for texture, just more sand. Uh, in his face. And that's what it looks like. So here's a uh, actual pixel size so you can kind of get an idea of what it looks at 100%. And so at this point, there's nothing left to do but to print it. you end up with something that looks like this once it's printed. And there's a little glare because it's a glossy. Um, and then so this is the final piece, which is digital. And I'll try to do another insert here, maybe showing the layers. Um, and so that's how um, I made the Doof Warrior piece.
Well, there you go. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. A uh, little look, sneak peek behind the scenes of how I made the new four-year piece. Um, if you haven't yet, go see Mad Max Fury Road. It is amazing. You will not be disappointed. Witness me. Artofwarlick.com.